Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here, and welcome to the Canon Cinema EOS C200 and C200B video training series. We are in Canon's Burbank facility, and this is the multi-purpose room that we're shooting in. It can be used for events, it can be used as a black box theater, and in our case, we are using it to shoot an instructional video, so as a small stage. Behind me, that's the prep bay, and we can close that off if we want, or we can use these two spaces together. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about shooting with the camera, so let's get started. So shooting with the C200 and the C200B, a little bit different than the other videos in the series. These are some of the things that I think are critical when you're using the camera to get the most out of it when we are actually on set or on location. And behind me in the foreground, I have Christy, and I also have Taylor with me. They are our talent for a few of the videos here to help illustrate some of the features that the cameras have. The first thing I wanna to talk to you about is the focus guide. And this is something that I think is extremely helpful when you're using the camera, especially when you're using your lenses in manual mode. And it will work with any compatible lens. I'm gonna actually switch the camera over to manual focus to show you this. And what I'm gonna do is go over to assignable button number one over here on the grip unit, which is what it is default set to and it will bring up this focus guide. And you can see it right here. There's the focus guide on, and there's the focus guide off. I'm actually gonna roll camera here as well so that we have some footage. So I'm just gonna turn that on and also show you where it is in the menu system. So I'm gonna go into the menu and under assistance functions, there it is, there's the focus guide, and it's on because I turned it on the grip unit. But if I want to, I can go into the menu and turn it on or off manually. And if I just step out of there, I can actually change where that focus guide is four different ways with the camera system. The first one is using the joystick on the back of the camera body. So I'm moving that focus guide from Christy to Taylor. The second one is by using the joystick here that is on the grip unit. You can also use the joystick that is on the monitor unit. And the fourth option is to just use the touch screen. So I can touch on the screen here, which makes it very, very easy to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that focus guide on Taylor, and I can see that she is a little bit further away. We can see the indicator there. So I'm gonna turn the lens to the left, and there we go, she's in focus. If I moved over to Christy here, I'm gonna turn the lens to the right, and there you go. I have focus on Christy. Now another really cool feature here is we can bring up a second frame in terms of the focus guide. So I'm gonna turn that on, step out, and we will now have two focus guides. If I depress the joystick here, it will bring up the other focus guide. I can move that over, let's say Taylor's face there. We'll go to the one on Christy and just move it exactly where we want it. And then Again, switching between the two, depressing the joystick. I'm gonna go ahead and focus on Taylor. Back to Christy. And you can see how effective that feature is in the camera system. And that will work, again, with compatible lenses. A lot of lenses, including prime lenses, with the camera system. So the second thing that I wanna show you here, and we're just gonna go ahead and turn off our focus guide right now is I wanna talk about the peaking feature on the camera system, and then we'll talk about magnification. So peaking is one of those assistance functions that is very important, especially when we're shooting in 4K, because when we're shooting in resolutions that are 3840 by 2160 or 4096 by 2160, we are shooting at such high resolutions, but we are generally monitoring on monitors that are much lower resolution, usually 1080. So the perception can be that the image is sharp, even though it's not necessarily sharp. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the menu here. In the menu, we're gonna go back into assistance functions into the second page of those options. And I can decide where I wanna push that peaking to. Video output would be this monitor unit. VF output would be right here to the viewfinder. So let's go ahead and turn it on here. But at the same time, I can just toggle on and off here with assignable button number two by default. And then I'm gonna go down 
to my peaking one options, and I'm going to choose the color of my peaking, white, red, yellow, or blue. I'll change it to blue right now, and how much gain there's gonna be. Um, we're actually gonna leave this up pretty high so you can see it pretty clearly. And then I'm gonna step out of there, and we're gonna take a look at our peaking. So let's just go ahead and go into a little bit of a tighter shot here onto Christy. And I'm gonna turn peaking off. I'm gonna turn peaking on. And you can see as I toggle what happens. And then as I'm out of focus and then I focus in, you can see that right now that blue peaking is showing up, especially in that catch light in her eyes, which is generally where we're gonna to wanna to have our focus. So that's your peaking. One additional thing under peaking here, we have black and white during peaking. And a lot of people like this because then we're just focusing on the contrast of the image and we can see that. So there's our peaking and the image turns black and white and that can make it quite a bit easier for some people when they're using the peaking feature and then I turn it off and then we're back to color. That is not part of the recorded image. It is just an assistance function when you're using the camera. And then we have over here our magnification, and we can use the joystick, again, in three different places, back of the camera body, on the grip unit over there, or on the monitor unit to place where we want to see the image. And then I can, again, use this in conjunction with something like peaking. So we're gonna go ahead and use that together so that we make sure that we're tack sharp. So we're using those two features together in the camera system, which makes it very, very easy for us to get critical focus and much, much easier for us in shooting scenarios, especially when we're shooting in 4K. So that is peaking and magnification. And now we're gonna talk about and get into the menu systems and talk about all of this HDR and LUT stuff with the camera. So we're gonna tackle something now that is a relatively big subject. We're gonna talk about custom pictures, we're gonna talk about HDR, we're gonna talk about LUTs, and we're gonna talk about them related to both recording to the SD cards in MP4 and in RAW to the CFast card. And they're a little bit different, so what I wanna do is take you through all of that stuff, and hopefully at the end of this segment, it'll make a lot more sense to you. So I'm gonna go over to the menu, and the first thing I wanna do is talk to you about our record format. Currently, I have the camera set up to RAW, so we're recording to the CFast card, and I'm gonna switch it over now so that we can record MP4 to the SD cards. As soon as I do that, the camera does a quick reset, and in the current firmware, what the camera is doing is it is also resetting the frame rate and by default to 59.94. So when you're switching from RAW to MP4 or from MP4 to RAW, that frame rate by default will reset to 59.94. If that's the frame rate you want, great. Otherwise, make sure you change your frame rate. I want 23.98 for what I'm doing right now. And now I'm gonna move over here to the custom picture HDR menu. Now this is specific to right now the camera being set up to MP4 SD card and you'll see in a few minutes when I switch over to RAW that these options will change slightly. So let's take a look at our presets. We have three options in here. We have BT709 and if I switch that to the BT709 option and I'll just go ahead and roll camera on that. What we have right now is we have a Rec. 709 gamma curve and also a Rec. 709 color space. I'll just stop recording. We'll go back into the menu. Second preset here, this is Canon Log. This will look considerably different. This is the log curve that we have and has existed in the Cinema EOS line since the C300 Mark I. So that's Canon Log. And of course, when we are in Canon Log, our gamma curve changes considerably. We get more dynamic range. We're seeing into those shadows more. We're seeing more into the highlights. But I do want to emphasize that we're still in a Rec. 709 color space. So while you'll want to make exposure changes in post-production, you may not need to make a lot of changes in terms of your color space if you are targeting 709 in post-production. Now the next one here that we have is Canon Log 3. 
This is sort of my favorite gamma curve right now when I'm using the camera system. It's giving us the most dynamic range we have from blacks to whites when we are shooting in this mode in the camera system. It will need to get adjusted in post-production in terms of exposure values, but it is still based on a Rec. 709 color space. So very, very easy to grade in post-production. And then the last option here under the preset menu is not a preset, it is actually turning the preset off. And when I do that, then we're talking about all of these other parameters inside of this menu. So for instance, I can choose my gamma curve and we have a lot of options inside of here, some that we've actually taken a look at, but this is specific to the gamma curve itself. And we have four normal gamma curves. Let me actually just go ahead and choose normal standard and we'll roll on that for a moment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So that is normal standard. And then step out of there and we'll go into normal two. And with each one of these, and this is really based on a Rec. 709 curve, there's just slight differences in terms of where the pedestal is and where the knee is falling. So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll on each of these so you can see that. We're gonna go here to normal three, which is just a standard BT709 gamma curve. And the last one here under normal is normal four. And we'll just go ahead and roll on that as well. So those are each of our normal gamma curves inside of gamma. Now, if I go into the menu here and I choose my other options, we have YDR. A lot of people love to shoot in YDR. It is still effectively based on a 709 gamma curve, but it's expanded and it really helps protect the highlights. But you'll find that when you use YDR, you generally are not going in and making as many adjustments as when you're shooting with a log gamma curve in post-production. Sometimes you don't need to make adjustments at all, especially if you expose your image correctly. And then we have Canon Log and we have Canon Log 3. Now there's another option here which is called Color Matrix. And Color Matrix is how basically the colors are being mapped, in this case within a Rec. 709 color space. So it will affect the sort of look of what you're recording. It's kind of like conceptually a film stock. So we're recording with a particular gamma curve, whichever one we choose. We are choosing then a color matrix to give it a slightly different look in terms of where our colors are mapped within that Rec. 709 triangle. So for instance, right now I'm in Canon Log 3 and I'm set to neutral. So it's really just a neutral mapping of our colors. And if I step out there and we record with that, that is our Canon Log 3 with a neutral color matrix. But I can go in here and I can choose additional options under color matrix. We have production camera. So I'll choose production camera and record with that. And that just changes that matrix just ever so slightly in terms of where things are mapped. And then another one that some people like to access is Cinema EOS Original. And this would make a lot of sense if you wanted to match another Cinema EOS camera, but not necessarily with Canon Log 3. You could because you might want that dynamic range. But let's say for instance, we wanted to use this camera system with a C300 or with a C100 Mark II. Then we could set this to Canon Log and we could set this to Cinema EOS Original. And that would be the setting that we'd wanna use if we wanted to match with that particular camera system using the Canon Log preset on that camera. So then we also have activate other settings. And when we go into here and we turn this on, then we are able to go into other settings and we can paint in camera. So if you really wanna go in there and you need to refer to your user manual if you wanna get into that in depth, you can really go into this camera system and paint. You can go into your master pedestal, you can go into your knee, and you can start to make other adjustments with the camera system having to do with white balance, sharpness, and even your color matrix tuning. A lot that you can do in here. I'm gonna back out of here, and I'm just gonna go back to the way I like to shoot with this camera in most situations, which is Canon Log 3 as a preset. 
and I'm just going to step out of there. And those are your options when you are in MP4 SD card. All right, through the magic of video production, we've come up from black and we have tweaked this set just slightly. And we have added a couple of elements for the next part of what we're going to talk about, which are the HDR LUT options inside of this menu. So I'm going to go into the menu here. And again, we are set to the Canon Log preset for this particular setting. And I'm going to go up to HDR LUT. And we can now see here that we can route LUTs or lookup tables to different places. So the first place that I'm going to route a LUT to is this, which is the video signal coming out of the video terminal into our monitor unit. And we have a few different options. Right now, the LUT is off, and we are going to change that to BT709. I'll step out of it, and you can see here on our screen that we're looking at a BT709 lookup table. This is not a recorded image. It is just the LUT that's being applied to the video signal here. Back in here and into the menu. And you can, of course, see here that to the SD card, the LUT is off. So again, we are not recording that LUT. Back up to our LUT options for video. And we're going to go in here to HDR Assist 400%. And when I look at that, one of the things that you can see here, and I have a flag that's basically in the background at the top middle of the frame with some gaff tape on it that has the word high with an exclamation point, is we can see into the shadows more when we use this. And this is basically a transform function. What we're doing is we are remapping and we're taking a look on this particular monitor, which is designed to allow us to do that into the shadows a little bit more in the image, but you will see that the light bulb that we have there is pretty blown out and we can't see any detail in that. We're going to go back into the menu and we're going to choose the last option, which is HDR Assist. That is 1600%. And you're going to see a big difference when we choose that and we step out of this. We're no longer looking into our shadows as much. What we're doing is we're seeing our highlight detail more. And now we can actually read the word high exclamation point on that light bulb. And by using the 400% and 1600% HDR assist options under HDR LUT, what you can do is with confidence see what that dynamic range is that you're actually getting when you are recording your image. So it's just a LUT, but it's letting you see into the shadows more and also into the highlights more. So I'm going to go ahead and go into that menu and switch that back to our standard 709 LUT. And I just want to talk about one more thing here, which is routing a LUT through the SDI terminal. What I can do here is I can just push a standard 709 LUT out of there, or I can actually choose ACES proxy. And when we choose ACES proxy, this is now not about recording to the SD cards. It's really about the signal that's coming out of the SDI terminal. And when we're doing that, yes, we're getting that higher dynamic range gamma based on Canon Log 3, based on the way we have the camera set up but we are also outputting a wide color gamut that is larger than Rec 2020, and it conforms to the ACES compatible monitor or display, then we're able to see that correctly on that device. So a lot of functionality here in terms of setting that up. Now, what I want to do next is I'm going to step out of the menu, and we are going to change our main recording format from MP4 SD card to RAW CFAST. So I'm going to switch that over. Again, remember that the frame rate is going to get reset. So I'm going to go over to my frame rates, and I'm going to change that in this case to 23.98. When we do that and we're recording in RAW at 23.98, we're recording DCI 4K 4096 by 2160 at 12 bit. So really, really great. Some of the higher frame rates, we go to 10 bit, but it's still DCI 4K. So we've changed our frame rate, and there's one other thing that I want to change here. I'm going to go over here to the first page of our recording media setup menu. And down here at the bottom, we have our sub-record format. And what this means is that when I'm recording in RAW at DCI 4K, 4096 by 2160, to the CFast card, that I'm also going to record a proxy to the SD card. 
And in a future firmware update, we'll also be able to choose XFABC, which will give you additional options in terms of proxy recordings. So we're gonna now go over to our CPHDR menu. And now that we've turned on that sub record format, we can really talk about what these options are giving you when you are recording and also sending out signals when you have the camera set up as raw. So let's go ahead and go to our presets first of all. If we go over here to, actually let's just choose BT709, what we are now doing, and we're getting a warning here about noise levels when we do that because it's gonna raise the image. What we're doing is we are essentially LUTing this image and it is what is going to go out of the terminals on the camera system. It is also what is going to be applied to that sub record format. So we are going to see this on our recorded image to the SD card and anytime we are pushing a signal out of our SDI terminal right now, the way it's set up or our HDMI terminal, it will apply this Rec. 709. But if I hit record on the camera system, what it's recording right here to the CFast is actually the Cinema Raw Light Raw recording. So we're gonna go back in here and take a look at our presets again. And if I change my preset, let's say now to Canon Log 3, then that's what's going to be recorded in my sub record format to the SD card and also pushed out over the terminals, the SDI and the HDMI terminals. So back out of there, and I'm gonna turn off my presets. And now, just like when we were talking about MP4 with the SD card, we can go in and we can choose a different gamma curve. So if I chose YDR, then effectively, even though we get that same warning in terms of the noise levels, we now have a YDR gamma curve that is being applied with Rec. 709 as the color space to my proxy or my sub record format and also to the terminals and the signals that they are sending out. But again, if I'm recording here to the CFAST card, that raw recording is going to be wide color gamut beyond 2020. There's no specific gamma curve being applied to it. That's something that we would deal with in post-production using something like Canon Cinema Raw development software, something we'll talk about in another video in this series. So we're gonna go back into that menu right now and I could choose a different gamma curve. Let's say Canon Log or Canon Log 3 or even one of the normal gamma curves that we took a look at when we were talking about MP4 to the SD cards. So let's just leave that right now on Canon Log 3. Of course, we can still go in here and we can change the color matrix. And that, of course, will also be applied to what is recorded for our sub record format and what's going out based on the way the camera's set right now to our terminals. And we can also activate and turn on and paint in camera if we want to inside of these settings. So we go into HDR LUT now and talk about the differences between this and how we were looking at it under MP4 SD card. And it is considerably different and we have one big change here, which is that under HDR, we can actually switch it from HDR off to HDR PQ. So when we choose HDR PQ, what we are now effectively doing is we're changing what is happening to the signal over the SDI and the HDMI terminals. So this is a big difference from what we were looking at before when we were going in there and using the presets and the different gamma curves, which was applying those settings to both the sub record format to the SD cards and also what was going over the SDI and HDMI terminals. So what we're effectively doing now is we are outputting an ITU-R BT2100 compliant signal over the SDI terminal and we're sending that PQ signal over the HDMI terminal as well. So if you're doing external monitoring or even if you were recording externally, then you would have that compliant signal coming out of those terminals. Now, additionally, inside of here, we can still LUT our viewfinder and our video signal here. Of course, we're not going to be changing our LUT for a SDI when we're set to PQ because that's what's being sent over the SDI terminal. So under the video signal here, we can change that again, HDR Assist 1600, 400, or 
BT709, same thing here for the viewfinder if we wanted to, we could change that. And by default, when we're in PQ, what's being recorded right here to the SD cards is a BT709 in terms of the LUT. So that's actually being recorded by the SD cards in that MP4 format for the sub-recording format. So if I turn off HDR, we then go back to very similar settings to what we had before with MP4 going to the SD cards. For instance, video signal again, 709, 1600, 400% or off. If we go to SDI, we have the options for BT709, but where is ACES proxy? Well, with the current firmware, if you want to activate that, we're going to step out of here. We have to go into our preset options and we're going to choose Canon Log 3 activate that and then when we go back up to HDR LUT and we go up to SDI we can see that we have the option for BT709 and also ACES proxy. So pretty exhausting but we made it and hopefully that gives you more insight in terms of what options you have when you're doing MP4 recording to the SD cards and also raw recording to the CFast card. Lots of different choices here, and just make sure that if you have any questions, you refer back to the user manual, but hopefully, again, that gives you more insight into what all of these options are. The last part of shooting with the C200 and the C200B is going to be about using the waveform monitor and exposing correctly for Canon Log and Canon Log 3. And I have Christy here. Hey, Christy, how you doing? And she is going to help with this demonstration. She is holding up an 18% gray card. And what I'm going to do is just talk about how I'm going to expose that gray properly so that when we get into post-production, when we're using log, we can do what we want with the image. And it gives us that full dynamic range that we're looking for. So right now, I am using Canon Log 3. So I'm just going to go ahead and have you move that left and right. And just taking a look at it on the waveform monitor there, it's just below 30 there on the waveform monitor. And when we are exposing for Canon Log and Canon Log 3, we want our exposure value to be at 34.3. Now, it's hard to see that 0.3, but we do want to definitely get it as close as possible to that as we can. Right now on this 18 to 80 compact servo, I am stopped down to a 5.6. I'm going to open up that lens. And Christy, if you can just, again, put that just above and near your face and move it left and right. And we take a look here on the waveform monitor. And wide open there, we're sitting just at about 34 or 35 there in terms of our exposure value. So that should be where we need to be for Canon Log 3. So there's one other type of waveform that I want to show you here. Right now we're using the standard line waveform type. And if I choose select line here, we'll see that there is a solid line here in the middle of the screen, this horizontal line. And that is going to be the place that we are going to see exposure values for whatever comes into the frame. So Christy, do me a favor and just drop that gray card down and we'll see that the gray card disappears. Now, of course, we're still seeing readings here based on that horizontal line in terms of exposure values from left to right. But Christy, if you just bring that gray card in just about there, and you'll see there is that gray card. Move it left and right a little bit, and there's our gray card showing up. So that select line option is a really great way for you to be able to see very exactly something that's falling on that line in terms of our exposure values. So that's how to expose correctly for Canon Log and Canon Log 3. But I just want to talk about one more thing just to clear up any confusion that you might have. If you have your camera set to RAW, when we go into the menu here for custom picture and HCR, what we want to do if we want to set our exposure to 34.3, is we want to make sure that our preset is either set to Canon Log 3 or Canon Log, or if that's off, that our gamma curve is set to Canon Log 3 or Canon Log. As long as we have it set to one of those settings, then we will make sure that we are exposing our image correctly. And then when we go into post-production, which we'll be talking about in another video in the series, if we're going to debayer that raw image, 
and turn it into a video signal. If it's exposed correctly for Canon Log or Canon Log 3, it will be exposed correctly for Canon Log 2. So there you have it, that's shooting with the Canon Cinema EOS C200 and C200B. Thanks for watching.